Good morning. So I'm Wendy Chisholm, an O'Reilly author. Um, I'm also a strategist. I am a activist. Um, and in general, I have a bunch of Vulcan tendencies. So I'm going to talk a bit about those today. Um, so I hope to have some fun with this session. And uh, I, I, I think it's really neat that, that, uh, that I was invited here to talk about this. So I kind of came out as an introvert in the post that Simon talked about. And it was a fun experience for me. Um, I didn't expect the response that I got from it. But one of the things that allowed me to come out is a TED Talk by um, Susan Cain. I don't know how many people have seen it. But she talks about the power of introverts. And it's neat to shift my own perspective in being an introvert and to really accept that I am and that that means I might do things differently. Um, and so I spent a lot of time making the world accessible, specifically our digital world. For the last 20 years, I have traveled the world learning about the variety of abilities that people have and how culture and location can affect their access to the world, but most specifically how it affects their access to the digital world. And what can we do as technology providers to make sure that everyone can access and participate, especially as more of our work our education, our shopping is becoming online. We're doing it digitally. And I found out some really interesting things, both about the world and about myself. Um, I found out that in Japan in the mid-90s, screen readers, which are the tools that people who are blind use to access a computer, to speech, speak the, the text out loud, when they were accessing web pages, it was just saying graphic, graphic, graphic. And so I wanted to find out why. Well. When the web was first created, we, didn't, we had left to right and right to left text direction, but we didn't have up to down. So Japanese, because it's top to bottom, they were just creating raster images of all the text. So there was nothing there. So I traveled a lot. That also meant that I got really tired. And I thought it was just jet lag. You know, I figured, I'm traveling around the world. Of course I'm getting tired. But what would happen is I'd go out on the road for a week, and I would come home, and I would sleep for a week. Or I would get sick for two weeks. And it just wasn't really sustainable. But it wasn't until about five years ago that I realized I needed to come up with some new strategies. Um, I had a child, and I could no longer come home and sleep for a week. I was on duty all the time. So my perspective started to shift. And it was about this time that we had more of a, a visible dialogue about introversion and extroversion. And so why is this kind of coming up now? This introversion, extroversion is nothing new. Um, Carl Jung talked about it in the 1960s. So what is happening? My guess, and I don't know how true this is, I don't have any data, but this is just my gut instinct, is that as the discussion about coming out is becoming more predominant, people are coming out about all sorts of things. Um, another of my favorite TED Talks is a talk about coming out about whatever it is that is your secret. We all have secrets, or we all have things we're afraid to show people. But letting them out is a really interesting experience. As Susan Cain talks about in her, her, uh, her, present, her TED Talk, a lot of our environments are designed for stimulation. They are designed for extroverts. Our workplaces, especially with more of the open plans. Um, our schools. Schools are now doing more people, uh, students in pods rather than just sitting in rows. And of course, conferences. Conferences are kind of built for stimulation. You're here 9 to 5. You're soaking in as much information as you can. It's designed to interact with a large number of people. And so if you're like me, that can be exhausting. As I said, I did that for 20 years, until this last March. I went to CSUN, which is the primary conference for technology and accessibility. It's in San Diego. It's an awesome conference. It was the 17th year that I went. So these people, I mean, I know everybody. And every 50 feet, there's somebody I want to hug. Because these folks are my family. I mean, there's not a lot of us in the world who do this for a living, especially who've been doing it for 17 years. And so I arrived on Tuesday. 
By Wednesday, I was exhausted. And so I decided to try something different. I decided to take a nap. There was a session I really wanted to go to. There were a bunch of my friends I hadn't yet seen, but I felt exhausted. And I felt, I'm going to honor my introvert and just see what happens. I woke up from the nap. I felt awesome. I went down into the conference center and immediately ran into someone that I really wanted to talk with. And I realized that for me, this conference, I wanted to focus on a very specific question because I was shifting how I was doing my work as well. And so I decided I was just going to start having these one on one discussions with people and ask every single person this one question just to see what I got. And mostly I was asking people how they did their work. So what it turned out to be was I, I kind of called these my mind melds. I just started getting deep, wonderful conversations with people. I'd get tired, I'd go back to my room. Thursday, I even went for a massage. I mean, really took care of myself, and it was awesome. I didn't drink coffee. I wasn't out drinking every night. <laughs> and it was fantastic. So by Friday, I felt like I really had something new going on here, and I felt really excited to share it with people. So I blogged about it. This is a blog that Simon mentioned. I shared it on Twitter and Facebook, of course. And I can't believe the response.、Um, a bunch of people came out as introverts as well. Several people said that I needed to post this before next year's conference so it would remind them how to attend the conference. And it just it was a great discussion that I didn't expect to happen.、Um, and it felt good. It felt good for me to come out myself and to start this discussion in our community. <laughs> so. How can you make OSCON and your experience here work for you? The organizers have done an amazing job of thinking about the variety of ways that people might want to attend and what breaks you might want to take. So, if you are feeling overstimulated, check out the relaxation room. I was in there meditating yesterday, and it's awesome. It's really, really nice. No laptops, no phones,、uh, there's yoga mats. It's very quiet, it's got some cool lighting, really cool silver cushy chairs. If, on the other hand, you need more stimulation, you want to talk to people, there's birds of a feather this evening, there's the tribe tables at lunch, there's a bunch of back channels. Find other people that you want to talk with and have a hallway track. You know, do whatever works for you.、Um, if you need nature or you need to move your body, and if you're not familiar with Portland, let me just recommend the Steel Bridge. Has a pedestrian walkway underneath it. It's awesome. If you walk across it, it leads to a Chinese garden. So you can get some nature, you can get a walk. Whatever it is, I encourage you to just check in with yourself and get a sense of what it is you need. If you are Klingon,、uh, I do believe the Batleth is happening down near the river. So you can get that out of your system as well. So do what you need to do. Because we need you all at your best, because that's what really makes a community thrive is people going away into the woods and coming back with revelations. Another thing that Susan Cain talked about that was really interesting is, is groupthink. We are physically wired to pick up ideas when we're around other people. But when we go off on our own, is where we really get some of the golden nuggets in our own individual contributions. So, Take those walks, but come back, please. We need you here. But I encourage you to do whatever it is that you need to do to,、uh, to make this conference great for you. Thank you.